little backlash. Pretty decent right there, though. Here's the Y axis. I'll take two, two hundreds over ten millimeters. Sounds pretty good. The Z is uh, is a bit of a challenge because it's a ten millimeter lead. But that's not too bad. And she fast. So the next thing I gotta do really is um get everything trimmed up. I mean, I, I, that's, you know, that's really not too bad. Six inches, it's about a tenth of a millimeter. I haven't really worked on this axis or the tramming. Flip around the front. In some ways, the hard parts of this build were easy, and the easy parts were pretty hard. Whoa! <laughs> That's my uh, end of Z travel there. Whoops. That woke me up. Anyway, it's, a, it's probably about two tenths of a millimeter in that axis. So it's good to know how it crashes, I guess. I'll be crashing it a lot. <laughs> Alright, let me take it up again. Try to watch out for the Z crash. Uh, yikes. Alright, here we go. Uh, she might crash. Alright. Yeah, it's about... It's probably about 20 over the full length of the 6 inches. But again, uh, I haven't really messed with it that much. And the... Um, the column here is... Is is bolted on... Um, really eyeballed. I mean, I didn't even knock it around with a mallet or anything. I just tried to line it up with this edge. Um, it seems like it's registered in there pretty decent. Um, these risers I had to put in here and here to, to get clearance for the lead screw, screw to go back and forth. So let me just run it back. And uh, pushing it just a little bit there. No. Uh, yeah, I'm about at, at maxed out on my, um, my uh, rails there. So I got to really figure out the position of this. I think it's going to be okay here. Um, if I use a three inch vise, which I really kind of hate this vise, uh, I'll be able to set it up like this. And so I'll, I should be able to get full, full depth of cut in here and then have my vise jaws stick out past so that I can get all the way from, from, uh, the back of the jaw. Let me, let me bring it down. Okay. So. So. 
So I have about two more inches of travel there. So if I even if I use a bigger vise, and that has the the meat sticking out on this side a little bit, I think that extra clearance will actually be good, because a lot of times, you know, I've noticed on my other mill that, you know, you tend to hit your vise into your column before before other stuff starts to be an issue. So it's really the space between the front of your vise jaw and you know the maximum capacity of your vise that's most important. So I think the fact that this doesn't go all the way back is is okay. Um, the uh, this mount is about I'm going to say this is about 16 millimeters. Um, I can get rid of some of this, and it's one of the first jobs I'm planning to do on this mill is try to match a match the original dovetail, um, and then actually have the um, this ride on the original dovetail. Right now, um, it's it's bolted into this piece this way, and then these bolts are kind of pulling it back this way, and there's a little gap there. So there's some spring, but this is um, you know this is this is 10 millimeter steel with 16 millimeter steel, so it's not a whole lot of spring there. But I can I can push this back a little bit, and then one of the other things I was thinking is maybe I actually want to. Um, I want to move this all the way back some, um, which would allow me to get the center of the cutter more, more, you know, back further into the center of the, the mass. I mean, this is one of the weird things about this mill is that the cutter is, is so far this way with the original table design, you know, you, you didn't have any contact with the dovetails because um, if you wanted to crank your your table out, you, you were you were only using half your dovetails, which were only six inches long. So anyway, I guess I'm rambling at this point, but um, you know, tramming it in, and so far it's uh, I, I'm 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 very pleased with the uh, the initial results. I don't know how rigid it's going to be. I think that'll be the next thing I want to test is uh, is somehow rig up a spindle. Uh, something to drive the spindle with and, and take a couple test cuts and something. So the good news is it works. <laughs> the bad news is it doesn't work really. Let's see if it if it if it destroys itself. We're fifty uh, percent. Yeah, it actually stabilized a little bit. Huh, how about that? Well, it's bound to uh, break right here. It's going to snap right there. I think I can... I think I can fix it. I actually I have through holes through here. And I think if I put a plate on the bottom and then compress it to the plate it would actually work. I don't know if the belt position is going to work. I'm going to have to adjust the pulley a little bit. But, uh, yeah. It's pretty wobbly. Let's crank it up and maybe something terrible will happen. I'll get it on YouTube. It actually is not moving. The faster it goes, the better it gets. What about that? Let's see what happens when it hits some load. Oh, there we go. There's the belt. It might actually cut though, with a small cutter. So I just gotta make sure the uh, electrical bits are taped and sealed so nothing falls in there, but uh, this might actually work. Amazing. I wonder if it's spinning in the right direction. It is. <laughs> well, it's something. Much better than doing it out of a piece of steel and then realizing that none of it worked.